last week. His, his main deck is one card different. He's playing a fourth copy of Grim Lava Mancer in lieu of the fourth main deck copy of Searing Blaze. This is a deck that's all about dealing direct damage to his opponent. With Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Price of Progress, Fire Blast, Lava Spike, Rift Bolt. I mean, it's all the hits. All one mana for, for three damage or better. And we see here, running down where we're at, Joshua chose stands at a healthy 16 right now. He has a Monastery Swift Spear in play. He's casting Ponder. Vikrant is at 19, about to be hit with a Swift Spear that is prowessing. However, there is a Rift Bolt suspended on Gulati's side. Where do you like Burn in this matchup? I do. I like Burn in this matchup. I like Burn in this metagame. I think that it's a good choice. Generally good against Delver decks. Most Delver decks have been veering away from Spell Pierce because Spell Pierce does not play especially well with or against Treasure Cruise. And most Delver decks, the best card they're bringing to the table against you is Spell Pierce. So I think this matchup's popular and has gotten better for Burn in the last couple weeks. All right, Swift Spear is going to attack Gulati. Looks like down to 14. Couple changes there. Richo is at 12. And, and we'll see where he goes from here. Another crack of a fetch line. Josh has to be careful about how many of those he cracks. Remember, his opponent is on a direct damage plan. No, all the points of damage matter. Yeah. They, it's, they, they all matter. It just seems like a race here. You know, the, the blue red Delver deck, it doesn't gain life. It's. It's, it's creatures are just burn spells. So another interesting thing here is I was talking to Jerry Thompson last night, who's playing Josh's same list. They, they agreed to play the same 75. And we were talking about the last couple of sideboard slots. And I was uh, strongly suggesting a Zurin orb to help with the sure. burn matchup. And they ended up playing one. And we'll see if Josh can find it. So interesting choice there. Gulati unsuspended a Rift Bolt. And he went at young Pyromancer instead of at Cho there. It was. It's a tough choice because the Pyromancer is a lot of damage. Well, I, I think there's an argument for keep the board clean and the life total high when you're casting Eidolon because this is a challenging workaround for Josh. Yeah, he's going to take a lot of damage to get rid of this card no matter what. And he's going to start by Treasure Cruising. This is seven cards in the yard. This is something you're, I'm assuming you'll see a lot of this weekend. Yeah, and, and uh, the current went to point at the Eidolon, but this is actually an eight mana spell. Do not be deceived by only the one land being tapped. Yeah, it doesn't actually take damage off it, even there. Idol on the Great Rebel is another card that's improved burn quite a bit. It is so well suited for these games that are all about brainstorms and ponders and so forth. Yeah, Joshua will get off get off light here. He ch casts Chain Lightning on the Eidolon. He does take his two, that'll put him to 10, but only had to play one spell into the Eidolon as opposed to multiples. Double prowess for the Swift Spear already this turn makes it a 3-4. And Josh in really good shape this game. Still, I believe, has Force of Will plus blue card, which can keep the crown uh, off of resolving one of the high impact spells. He's got a pretty solid clock right now. And even has the luxury to get aggressive here. It's going to be Chain Lightning main phase. He's going to cast that at Gulati while Gulati does not have two red up. So that puts him to 11. Now a 4 5 Swift Spear will put Vikrant to 7. Yeah, Chain Lightning is an odd duck because most of the text box kind of reads like it's flavor text almost. But in the Burn Mirror or matches where you're playing against other red decks, timing your Chain Lightnings correctly is really important. And I want to point something. This is interesting about the Joshua Cho and Jerry Thompson list. In Joshua's hand, well, first of all, Gulati has a Fire Blast in his hand. But Josh also has a Fire Blast. This is a one of that they have decided to put into the main deck. And Fire Blast is great here for Josh. Not only is it a lot of damage, but it also means he has a lot of insurance against Price of Progress because he can always sack his two Volcanic Islands and fizzle it. Chain Lightning on the Monastery Swift Spear. Gulati feeling the pressure here. He's going to start using his burn defensively. If he can get rid of the Swift Spear, maybe he can draw more burn. Try to slow the pace of the game down. Something I generally don't like, but uh, I think in this spot it's, it's correct. There's just too high of a chance of, of the current dying next turn. Yeah. When you start having to burn their creatures, it's a sign that you're usually behind with the burn deck, which, which Gulati is. Yes. So now he's going to have to just out top deck Josh Cho. Josh has a Fire Blast, Force of Will, and a blue card, I believe. I don't think he has a replacement creature just yet. It is a weakness of the Delver deck. There's only 12 creatures in the list now. It does have a lot of cantrips to find it, but you get in these spots where you just want a little bit more juice to finish off the game. 
and you have to spin your tires with cantrips and card drawing spells and your draw step hoping to find threats. And a lot of your threats are easy to kill as well. So even if you find one of them, there's no guarantee it, it carries the day. I'm going to start by cracking a fetch land here. Yeah, he just needs to find a lightning bolt. That would do it. He does have fire blast in hand. Start by getting his third volcanic island. What we're, what we're setting up for here that he would want to crack first. Now, this is a spot I think if I was Joshua, I would have gotten the mountain, which he could have done off the Scalding Tarn, because now even with the Fire Blast, Press of Progress is a card that he has to concern himself with a little bit, and he could easily work around otherwise. And it's going to be Snapcaster Mage on Chain Lightning. It looks like he's actually going for a kill here. That's going to put Vikrant down to four. And Vikrant can go ahead and fire back with the Chain Lightning. But, but Josh it's... feels he's pretty safe here. If a grant taps out to fire to shoot it back, there's no risk of Josh dying, and the fire blast is lethal. Yeah, so the chain landing that's three fire blast is four, adds up to seven, and that also adds up to game three. Just fire blast and land on Vikrant's side. None of those will be of help. And yeah, this, it plays out a lot like a burn mirror here. You definitely see the advantage that Joshua chose blue cards give him by that treasure cruise that he got to cast there. That seems really big. You definitely think his early game's a little worse as a result. He also is just a little less dense. You know, the burn deck is all gas. There's no moving parts. So your straw sets on general are gonna be a little bit easier, easier to convert into damage. Whereas the blue red Delver deck has to go through some hoops. Eidolon of the Great Rebel is also a challenging card for the Blue-Red Delver deck. They do have a lot of bolts that can answer it, but if it goes unchecked, it's, it's a big issue. All right, they have to have a bolt, basically. And Searing Blaze, Searing Blood Effects. The Burn deck has it, Josh does it, and that's a big swing in a creature and burn matchup. Yeah, absolutely. You see three Searing Blades in the main deck for Vikrant. I do not believe he has any Searing Bloods or the fourth Searing Blades in his sideboard, so he's a little short on those. Yeah, going to Vikrant's sideboard here, two copies of Vexing Shusher, two in Searing Bridge, two Relic of Eternatus, two Mind Break Trap, a Silver Vortex, a Pyroclasm, an Electricery, a Rail Elemental Blast, a Pyroblast. Of the cards here that would bring in the two Red Blasts, well suited for fighting Treasure Crude specifically, which is the biggest issue for Vikrant in the matchup. Also, the two copies of Relic Progenitus, low opportunity cost, because you know always stack it to draw a card, and very good at attacking Josh's graveyard, which is trying to set up for big treasure cruises. Yeah, so there isn't... Yeah, so not too much that he uses in the matchup. Not really. He might bring in the Electric Ear as well, because it's a good answer to Young Pyromancer. Sure. But you can only bring in so many reactive cards against Burn, because what's likely to happen in these games, McCran's going to get his shots in with some Burn spells or some creatures while Josh is trying to set up. Josh is going to get fairly low, and then Vikrant's going to have a couple draw steps before Josh kills him. So you want to make sure that you're drawing direct damage spells, and even though Electricery is a good answer to certain things, he does risk diluting his deck too much and just not having enough firepower to take Josh out of the game. There always is a danger of over-sideboarding with a deck like Burn. You know, you don't never really want to board out more than much more than five cards. Yep. On Josh's side, he has a Snapcaster Mage, a Hydro Blast, two Smash of Smithereens, a Zoran Orb, a Price of Progress, an Electricery, two copies of Sulfuric Vortex, a Sulfur Elemental, two Pyroblasts, a Null Rod, and two copies of Graph Digger's Cage. Not really a ton to bring in here. The Snapcaster Mage and the Hydro Blast are great, and is the Zoran Orb. Yeah, I mean, the Zoran Orb, so just, so you said it's good in the matchup. Like, there's different levels of good. Can, can Vikrant even beat a Zoran Orb? It's Sulfuric Vortex or Bust. Okay. He's not going to be able to play a normal game against this card because you can't, you cannot price a progress Josh out anymore. And Zoran Orb represents, you know, six or eight life for no mana. So you can't just power through it. I mean, Josh is sacking sometimes, his own lands. Sometimes, but it's it's real hard. Uh, I, sure. I, I don't think that Vikrant can really beat this thing unless he has his Vortex. He's got one in the main deck, one in the sideboard. This is typically not a matchup where you want Sulfuric Vortex. Maybe you keep in one. I'd be stunned if Vikrant brought in the second copy. And yeah, your it, opponent's it, also playing Fire Blast. It's... He's more likely to have zero of them than two. Right. So if Josh finds his Zoran Orb, uh, Vikrant's going to be in a ton of trouble. Zoran Orb, also a really sweet Treasure Cruise facilitator. You add some mana, put some lands oh, in your wow. graveyard. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's, if you really, really want to fill up the graveyard quickly, you can just sack your lands. All sorts of synergies. <laughs> Yeah, I hadn't thought of that with Zurn Orb. That is very, that is pretty strong here. It is just a one of, though, in Joshua's sideboard. But there are a lot of card drawing effects in this deck, and that's why you see Josh's sideboard 
scattered with seemingly random one and two ofs. It's because with Brainstorm, Ponder, and Treasure Cruise, you look at a ton of cards. So make sure you have tools for every matchup. You get a lot of value out of your one ofs because you can find them. And uh, make sure you're not bringing uh, you know, a sideboard to a matchup where you have nothing to bring in. And Burn is, a very, Burn is a very popular option in the initial rounds of a Grand Prix because it doesn't cost that much money to, to build. And so if you're in the one buy bracket or the zero buy bracket like Josh is in this tournament, uh, erring on the side of having a little more action against Burn I think is a correct decision. And so if Josh and Jerry were on the fence about whether or not it was, should be a Zurn Orb or maybe a card for a different matchup, the fact that both of these players don't have many buys probably influenced their decision. Yeah, you want to make sure he was safe against Burn. Vikrant is going to go ahead and keep on seven. We'll get a chance to look at Cho's hand. It's all the talk about the card. I, I'd be interested in seeing a game where he has one. I'm pretty sure Josh would be interested in that as well. Yep. And we're going to start here. Scary start is Goblin Guy, but it's just going to be a Lava Spike. Josh goes to 17. Though against Blue Red Delver, I'm a fan of siding out as many creatures as possible because they have a lot of burn spells to kill things, and they're really good at blocking because of Young Pyromancer. So I think generally generally speaking, you're better suited being a burn deck than like a creature and removal deck in the matchup. So you, even on the play, you don't want Goblin Guides here? Uh, I wouldn't mind taking them out. They have to All be right. in your opening hand to be good. And you have draw steps, you know? Yeah. Draw for the turn there was Price of Progress for Vikrant. You see a pretty good showing here. He's got three more lands. It's about all the lands he wants for the game. He's definitely concerned about getting, I think he has an Eidolon in his hand and he's worried about getting dazed. So can he, the question for me is, can he afford to play around Eidolon here? Well, around dazed, I mean, with his Eidolon. The thing is, if you're gonna have anything get countered here, it might as well be your Eidolon because Josh, is likely to advance his board next turn. And then you don't want to be in a position where you're casting Eidolon while you're behind in the damage race. You want to do it while you're close to even, uh, or else the card's not worth very much to begin with, and it might in fact be a hindrance to, to Vikrant going forward. So if, you, if anything gets dazed, you want it to be this. Yeah, and that's a good point. Eidolon, you don't want to have Eidolon on a board where you're behind. So I don't think Vikrant can afford to wait another turn playing around days because of the nature of Eidolon. If it was another burn spell in his hand, let's say, you know, he's got a two damage burn spell, I'm happy saying go. There's no rush to play it. You don't have to play into the days, but because it's Eidolon specifically, I think he has to cast it. So certainly with something like Searing Blaze, he would have just fired that off. For sure, yeah. And it looks like Eidolon does sneak by, so it's gonna be in play. And Josh is in a bit of a bind here. He's got the smallest creature on the board. The only way he can make it bigger is by playing a spell, but that triggers Eidolon, so. It's going to start by attacking. Uh, Vikrant has no desire to get bolted to the face if he blocks. Yeah. Which is what would happen. Looks like it's going to be 17 apiece here. Vikrant, two damage off the Swift Spear and the fetch on Vikrant's side. One Lava Spike on Josh's side. Second price of progress, the draw for Gulati there. And with now with the second copy of Price of Progress in Vakran's hand, Zoran Orb is a huge swing card. If Josh finds it, Vakran's in a world of trouble. And if he doesn't, Vakran might overpower him, because this is a lot of damage he's building up in his hand right now. So interesting, I want to point out what happened last turn here. Um, Idol on the Great Rebel was lightning bolted on Josh Cho's side, but Vic Josh ended up doing the bolt on Vikran's turn, which means it seems like he, he would have dropped a point of damage there. If he was committed to this line, he probably would have wanted to bolt it on his turn, right? He may have been trying to trap him, hoping Vikran did, you know, trigger the idol on doing something non-essential. Sure. Going back to Josh's turn three, he's going to start with a brainstorm here. It's going to trigger Monastery Swift Spear. Finds a stack of Force of Wills. Which is great. Force of Will isn't always great against Burn because they have so many redundant tools. It's all the same stuff. But when you are pressuring them, Force of Will is great. Keep them off of uh, the couple of spells you really care about. Try to keep them away from that critical mass. Yeah, it seems like Vikran's just not there on damage. You look at his hand, he has two prices and a lightning bolt. Right now, that's seven. Josh is at a very healthy 15. Josh is going to crack fetch here. Finds a basic. 
This is just a concession to price of progress. Goes down to 14. Without the fire blast and without a Zoran orb, I think Josh is going to be very careful about deploying a second volcanic island. He's going to want to yeah. keep it. You know, if he can do this, if he can go fetch a mountain, great, or draw a mountain, great. But I think he's going to be really careful about getting that second volcanic into play. Yeah, he does have a second volcanic in hand. He's going to start by casting Jataxian Probe off blue mana. And now he's got to know not to play that volcanic in his hand. Two prices and a lightning bolt along with wooded foothills for Vakrant Gulati. There was some indecision before. Yeah, it's gone now. It's been revealed. So if you're on Gulati's side, do you just fire off these price of progresses for two? It seems unlikely they'll ever get to do more. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm fine just casting it. Uh-oh. The lock. And here is here it is, Zurin Orb cast for Josh Cho. Now, the question is if whether or not Gulati played price in response to Zurin Orb. It looks like he did not. It wouldn't matter too much. No, not too much. I mean, those prices are doing zero now. They might do, they might push. Josh might sack all land and, and keep it even, but. Yeah, this... The old Zurin Orb 16 land deck. Don't get to see that much of that, but. <laughs> Josh getting paid off in this matchup for this use of a sideboard slot, that's for sure. And now he has to just gets to make some decisions. Price of Progress being cast on Cho's end step. How many lands does he want to sack? The answer is at least one and just one. So he's, like, he's going to break even. I like keeping it clean. You know, there's no reason to, to blow up all of your lands right now. Just, just push the damage, keep your Volcanic in play. And another idol out of the Great Revel for Gulati. It's going to be good here. Once again, you said Zurin Orb is, is Sulfuric Vortex or Bust is how you described it. Yep. And that's and not I, a Vortex. I mean, if Josh's hand's really bad and there's no pressure, maybe you can play against the Zurin Orb. But in this spot, the Kranz on it or Bust. And it's Eidolon's not going to resolve. That's Force of Will pitching Treasure Cruise, a big price for Josh. Feeling pretty confident in his standing. Doesn't want to lose to something like an Eidolon. He also may have another treasure cruise in hand, and he doesn't really value the second one that much because the first one's going to wipe away his graveyard, and he's happy putting a card in the graveyard for the treasure cruise. Yeah, looks like that's exactly exactly it. He has another forcible and treasure cruise in hand. Wooded Foothills will be the play. Josh will go down to 12. I think you might see Josh here go get a mountain. Yep, keep his basics. Even though he has the Zurin Orb, he still doesn't want to be in a position to be forced to sacrifice the price of progress. So yeah. this gives him maximum flexibility. And he knows Gulati does have a second price. He did get to see that off Jataxian Probe. Graveyard has built up once again to seven cards, so this is going to be an Ancestral Recall. When he goes for Treasure Cruise here. Quite the deal. Yeah. Delving seven. And if Josh wasn't already ahead, he sure is now. Finds Chain Lightning, among others. So start with Ponder here. This is two triggers from Monastery Swift Spirits up yep. to a 3-4. And we'll see if he uses that last man to fire off the Chain Lightning. Gulati will get to send the Chain Lightning back. That's not that big of a concern, though. I don't think that's. I don't think there's a big rush on Josh's side. Swift spear for three. Gulati's down to ten. He can. He can just play a pretty, pretty conservative game from this spot. Gulati doesn't have that much burn. You see, searing blaze the draw. He does have an uncracked fetch land, so. You can't, can go for that Monastery Swift Spear. A card to keep in mind, even though it's not in that many burn lists, is Volcanic Fallout. So that is a consideration for not wanting to just... His Swift Spear is not as safe as it might appear. And there's no real rush to fire off the burn spells. So... Sure. Yeah, he, if he just keeps one spell up it's of really, any kind, it, Fallout would not get him. It's really hard for Vakran to do anything. Yeah, a lot of life on Joe's side. Josh Cho's side. He's at 12 with potentially 18 even with Zurin Orb. It's a tough spot. But the Searing Blaze is a good start. So first thing he needs to do is slow down Cho. 
Yeah, I think I, I, I like opening this turn on just cracking the fetch land, trying to Searing Blaze something. It requires a counter spell or two spells in response. Yep. Not easy for Josh to do with just a mountain to play. And if it's Force of Will, well, you have to trade with the Force of Will at some point regardless. Yep. Josh does have a replacement creature in his hand. He has a Snapcaster Mage that got found off the Treasure Cruise. You know, here's the blue cards do seem to be bullying the burn deck, right? Josh gets to draw multiple cards, and he gets to flash back cards. Just, it feels like even though Vikrant's having really good draws here, it doesn't feel like there's much he can do. Yeah, but especially in the face of the Zoran Orb. Uh, that, that's even just cards in hand and board versus cards in hand and board. Excluding the Zoran Orb, I think Vikrant's in trouble. But even if he's able to weather this storm, there's still long term. How are you supposed to power through this thing? And Vikrant. On Josh's turn, it looks like he's going to go ahead and go for the Searing Blaze. We're not sure on the timing of this one. It might have, this may have been when Josh tapped out to Lightning Bolt Vikrant. Either way, it looks like the Swift Spear is going to get binned. And we will see if it's going to get binned. I feel a little bad for Vikrant here. A burn brother in arms and this one Zurin orb that I told, <laughs> told my buddies to put in their sideboard is now now quite the issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Josh is gonna pass the turn. Looks like on end step he's gonna go for a snapcaster lightning bolt. Six and nine would make the game look close here. And another good draw for Vikrant. He drew red elemental blast. That'll take care of Snapcaster Mage. But this is my issue with cards like Red Elemental Blast in the sideboard, is that Trying to line up and trade when you're with your opponent when you're casting a lot of spikes is not a great recipe. No. I, I'm trying to interact as little as possible. It's good enough to get Force of Will off from Josh. So the Snapcaster will resolve. Red Blast gets countered. And it looks like he's just going to go for, for the Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt has flashback here. We'll see what Vikrant wants to do. He also has a Price of Progress. And Lightning Bolt in his own hand. Eight and six are life totals. Both players relatively low. Josh Cho could go up to four, as high as 14 off his Zurin Orb. Once Vakrant takes damage, that damage is permanent, though. He has no life gain and is down to six. So he's got to be very, very protective of his own life total. Yeah. I mean, Vakrant can go ahead and price here, but Josh can work around this in a number of ways, including by saying that resolves. Yeah, price will be cast. It's going to float the red, it looks like, for the Lightning Bolt, and then go ahead and sack the, the Volcanic Island. She'll go up to 10, and he'll take no damage off Price of Progress. Bolt will still get flashback, and now it's going to go upstairs. Vikrant is at 3. And with a chain in hand, that should lock it up for Josh. And not going to slow world. There's Chain Lightning. And there is the match. Joshua Cho, two games to one, comes back after dropping game one to take the match over his burn opponent, Vikrant Gulati. We saw sideboard cards there. We're quite good for Josh. The one Snapcaster Mage, another card that I'm a big fan of in the sideboard that I was advocating for yesterday. It's the type of card where you're going to bring it in a bunch, and it's going to be a powerful bunch, and it's one slot. So. You saw both those cards, the, the Snapcaster and the Zoran Orb really flex their muscles. Yeah, when you're playing a deck with so much de card selection, it really only takes a one of to turn to help you in a match. You have a very good ability to find it, as you saw there. And there's definitely